aging face that this world has forgotten. Mm, what is up, guys, and welcome, of course, to another episode of Who Was Really Better? And this time we're looking upon the groundwater toads from generation 3 and 5, being, of course, Seismitoad versus Swampert. They are both known to be one of the more superb kind of typing combination because water and ground solving so many things naturally. So Swamp introduced of course generation 3 as a pretty darn good powerhouse. Uh, actually got a part of a revamp with Seismator in generation 5 and the big question is was this revamp superior to already existing formula? So with that said let's go over of course these Pokemon stats and abilities alone. So from the get-go, we're gonna just look at their stats and stats alone. It's very clear that Swampert is considered, well, while it doesn't have as much of HP, of course, with 100 or, of course, with 105, it does get a bit of a more attack rate, 110 over, of course, Seismitoad's 95, so kind of differential is there. And then, of course, mixed defenses here. Swampert has 90 in both defense and special defense, while Seismitoad has 75. So it does lose a little bit in its bulk there, even though it has more HP. And of course, the special attack, they do shed at quite well with both 85, which are above average as best. And then, of course, we get the speed stats that definitely does differentiate them quite a lot. And of course, the Carlesa with their abilities kind of differentiate themselves to what they're able to do. Uh, Swampert, definitely the bulkier, slower with 90 base speed, while Seismitoad actually has 74, so kind of niche speed here on Seismitoad. And of course, the abilities kind of stands out for what that is a good thing. Because Swampert, while only have a Damp and Torrent, trust me, these are very, very, very niche abilities. The Damp, of course, uh, only ensures that nobody can use a Light Cell Drug or Explosion while, of course, the Fizzy Pokemon is active. But Torrent, one of those really, really tough abilities where, since, of course, the natural stats of Swampert is to be a bit bulkier, this forcing it down a little bit because you need to be around 30% to have, of course, a stab boost of 50% to your water type damage moves. So it's a bit of an issue moves, much like of course the Venusaur's kind of situation in the previous episode, uh, not really standing out that much. Now we look at Seismitoad, it actually has three very useful abilities, it all depending of course on the role you want to set Seismitoad in. It gets Poison Touch, which of course with physical moves, you have a 30% chance of poisoning your opposing Pokemon. Swift Swing would boost your speed by double, which is great of course, consider that niche speed here alone. And then of course get a Water Absorb, which makes sure that you recover about 25 HP, for every water hit that you will be taking for that turn. So yeah, one can see that Seismitoad has at least ability um, edge over Swampert, even though Swampert overall has the better stats distribution. So of course with this said, one has of course start looking at, you know, what does these Pokemon do? Well, they kind of do the same thing, which is very interesting. They do share their move pool quite well. Um, they both learn the likes of Waterfall, of course, and then we got of course Earthquake. Scald, Earth Power, Ice Punch, they all share it. Um, they even got a low kick to share, which is kind of funny considering, of course, their um, feet. But yeah, they do get a lot of offensive move and share a lot of that. They even get Stealth Rocks together, and both could be utilized really well as a defensive Pokemon. Though clearly, one has the defensive capabilities of another, and the other one got War Absorb. So it all comes down to personal preferences of how you want to use that alone. Now, the difference them aren't necessarily all that much. Swampert does get Ice Beam, which is something that Seismitoad do lack. It gets actually Ice of Wind overall, which is not necessarily a bad move, but Ice Beam clearly is the stronger between the ones. And then we have, of course, one of the other really, really weird ones. Seismitoad actually gets Grass Knot. Uh, while it not necessarily sound as the most keen or best move ever, consider that, of course, it has to deal with the other, of course, defensive water size in the defensive set, Grassnop might actually not be such a bad thing to consider. And of course, Seismitoad gets Drain Punch, while of course, Swampert does get Superpower. And yeah, that's the thing though. The defenses set on these two Pokemon are very, very shed. And they usually do the same thing, though Swampert being slightly better with Rest and Sleep Talk Scald Earthquake, mainly because its natural damage output with 110 base attack and a decent special attack to boost makes this Pokemon very, very easy from turn 1 to set up Stealth Rocks and whatnot. It's one of those few Pokemon that just is an imminent danger once it's sent in if you don't have a proper response to it. Seismitoad on the other hand has a few other advantages, though the, our defensive set, while good, is not as good as Swampert, even though it has 4 Absorb, because they do both lack proper recovery outside of rest. But, 
And Seismito do get the likes of Sludge Wave and Sludge Bomb, which could make it a bit more niche, of course. And then, of course, the variety that is Swift Swim. And Swift Swim does make this Pokemon maybe not the most potent sweeper, but it does get the Drain Punch. It gets some variety, but of course, the likes of Assault Vest or Life Orb. Life Orb definitely is the one standing a bit taller, a bit more unique, mainly because Drain Punch is a way to actually get some extra recovery on a Pokemon that does lack it. And to get it with the mixed defenses that are a bit of a lower side, it could be good to at least get at least a few amount of HP back, to consider, of course, that they actually have a very, very, very threatening HP stat to boot here. So if Seismodot is to be considered a more aggressive, faster variant of these two, one really has to look at Swampert to see, you know, what else could it do? One in ten, as stated here, is an imminent threat usually, and one can't really forget that actually Swampert gets Curse. Curse might not be considered the best kind of move, but Curse definitely is something to boost Swampert even further. It does have that viable option, and due to mixed defenses, and of course, as you guys can see, since we actually haven't talked about this, you know, actually, the water ground typing combination does have one immunity and four resists, and only one weakness as being grass, which means that Swampert actually can set up fairly okay as long as there aren't an imminent check or counter for it, which of course a grass move can be for it. But as stated yet again, its defenses are quite high with a very, very high, of course, base HP, which just helps out for Swampert to be slightly more unique and slightly more stronger than the Seismitoad. Don't get me wrong here, Seismitoad is a very, very good Pokemon, but they definitely didn't solve enough with Seismitoad to make it better than Swampert. Seismitoad does get a lot of variety, which makes it a more flexible mon, but it, it just lacked that imminent threat that is Swampert. And due to that, and actually that reason alone, the defensive set and the more offensive variant of Swampert simply try and over Seismitoad, even though Seismitoad has the more variety on bond to it. Though with that said, if there were to be a battle between 1-1 one one versus these two guys, it's very clear that Seismitoad due to Grass Nut would win. And Seismitoad still has the broader move pool, so it has its edges, there is not necessarily about that. I think the reason the Swift Swim isn't enough to triumph over Swampert is just because it's not the best Swift Swimmer. It's not like the same comparison that was between Victor Bell and of course Venusaur, where they actually were THE sweepers. Seismitoad is just kind of a niche, it's more used for stealth rock capabilities, and so is Swampert. And due to that, Swampert is better due to its just extra power in bond with it. It has a special, better special attack, it has a more relevant special move pool, and has a good physical move pool with, of course, the likes of Hammer and Super Arm, which are very, very strong hits, which is something that Swampert does lack. It does have heavy hits, but doesn't hit as heavy as Swampert. And hey, Swampert simply is one of those Pokemon that, due to its natural bulk, just are always threatening no matter what, while Seismic Sword can easily be forced out, sadly. With that said, go though, huh? What do you guys think? Which kind of guy do you kind of prefer between these two? And of course, if you have another idea of a matchup that you want to see, make sure to write it down below. I'm actually gonna post these videos two times a week from here on out, mainly because you guys have been supporting me so well with these videos, and I do enjoy making them. So thank you so much for being a part of this, and uh, yeah, as always, thank you of course for watching the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Until then, of course, take care. Bye.